Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. As you know from my last couple of videos, I had done like a get ready with me and then my London birthday vlog, so it has been my birthday. I have a beauty haul to share with you of lovely gifts that I was lucky to receive. Adding that onto my inventory hasn't been the most fun and I did get four single eye shadows in amongst that, so given I have done a lipstick declutter reasonably recently and sort of knew that there wasn't going to be much lipstick to let go of. I kind of thought it's time to try and clear out a little bit. We've brought some new stuff in, let's move out some old stuff to make room for it. And single eye shadows is a category that I have got quite a few products in, so I think there's definitely some stuff we'll be able to say goodbye to today. <laughs> Just before we get into the eyeshadow, I've got some other products that I am decluttering and I'm just going to share them with you really quickly. First of all, I've got five coloured mascaras. They've obviously all been open. They're technically all expired, which to be fair, probably applies to almost everything in this box anyway. But yeah, I've got five mascaras. I enjoy these in summer, but I just feel like we've just had summer. We're going into autumn. I'm probably now not going to pick them up again until next summer. And... I really don't want five of them hanging around for the sort of one day of summer that I take the notion for coloured mascara. So I'm just going to get rid of these five. And then I'm also getting rid of this, which is the Dr. Jart Cisa Pear Tiger Grass Colour Correcting Treatment. As you will see in my beauty haul when I do it of things that I got for my birthday, got the Clarins SOS Primer, the green one, and I'm going to use that in place of this. So rather than bothering to finish this because I've got quite a lot left and I don't really like it I am just going to declutter it and say goodbye. I think I will start with these Stila eyeshadows. So this is Molten Midnight, Into the Blue and Next to Naughty. I got these I think all on the same trip or maybe I got the minis on one trip and the full sizes on another trip. I can't quite remember but I definitely bought these at the same time and my friend Lauren bought this at the same time as me and she has since decluttered hers because she said it had just dried out. I haven't used mine in ages so I don't know if mine have dried out but we're going to swatch them, have a look. I rather suspect that these will have dried out and it will be time to say goodbye so let's see. I absolutely love this one but well it's not too bad actually. such a lovely colour but it's definitely not picking up. It used to be that you would swatch these and you just had this super thick line of rich pigment you know and you're not kind of getting that anymore. Oh, this one's actually the best I would say of them. Yeah you see you can kind of you can see the difference between this one and these two in terms of how they've swatched but at the same time I think I finished all the minis from this one, from this set, and this is the one that's left because it's probably the one that I used the least. I think I'm ready to just say goodbye to all three of these. They're actually not performing quite as badly as I thought they would, and I kind of thought it might be easier to say goodbye if they were performing badly, but they're not performing at their best, and yeah, they're just going to continue to dry out and go off, and I've got so much to use that I'm never going to finish them. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to say goodbye to these three. Don't think I'll be decluttering any of these. So these are my Anastasia Beverly Hills single shadows. So you buy these as singles and then obviously I've put them in palettes. So these shadows are Sunset, Metal, Pink Champagne and Brick. So, oh no, that feels really good even just from swatching there. Oh yes, that is a beautiful shadow. Definitely not decluttering that. Then we've got Metal which again is super pretty. Pink Champagne's not quite as sort of in your face as the other two, but it's still a really pretty shadow, so I think I'll keep it for now. And then the other shade that I've got here is Brick. Also, I am getting my nails done on Thursday. I swear one day I will manage to schedule it so that one of these swatching and decluttering videos happens you know, the same time as I've actually just had my nails done rather than when my nails are not looking their best, but it is what it is. 
do you know that's a nice shade but I probably let's be honest own it in other places so I think I'm gonna get rid of brick two loose shadows here which I'm definitely going to keep they're from a brand called love the planet so they're loose they're kind of difficult to swatch but I really like both of these so I'm definitely going to keep both of these. This is the shade Storm and this is the shade Neutral Brown. I have this little NYX shadow here which I haven't used in ages but it does swatch beautifully or it did. Um, it's the shade Fireball so let's see how it's swatching these days. Oh, it's still very pretty. But at the same time I feel like I've had this shade for so long. I remember Lauren and Lindsay buying this because I recommended it when we were on one of our London trips and I think like this was when these shades were kind of just starting to sprinkle through but now that I've got like the Too Faced Extra Spicy palette and various other sort of warm palettes like that I don't think this shade is that unique in my collection anymore so I think I'm going to say goodbye to this one. This is an old classic is MAC Painterly Paint Pot which is by some miracle actually not dried up yet so this never really worked as a base for me and um, I know for a lot of other people this was a great primer but I've got hooded eyes and this never stopped my eyeshadow from creasing or anything like that but oh do you know what? I might just pass this on as well it, it never functioned as a primer for me and I was going to say you know it's still quite a nice easy neutral shadow which it is but I've got other nice easy neutral shadows so I think I will pass Matte Painterly along. I feel like this is such an icon, I can't quite believe that I'm getting rid of it, but I am, so pass that one along. I've got another Matte Paint Pot in here, which if it's not dried up, I think I will keep, if I can find it. Paint Pot in the shade Taylor Grey. Again, not dried up, and in fact, you know what, I thought I would be keeping that, but now that I'm looking at it, like when I bought this I was dyeing my hair blonde and I just looked much cooler toned overall. Whereas I feel like now because I've gone back to red and I've got brown eyes, even though I've got pink in my skin which technically makes my skin cool toned, it's really just my face, like my actual, you know, my skin here as you can see is a bit more on the, kind of in the neutral zone actually and then I think with my eyes my hair, I suit sort of neutral to warm leaning tones more than cool tones and I think I probably wouldn't suit this now so although I thought I'd be keeping that I am going to pass it on. Dior shadow which I will be keeping actually there's this is a definite keep called fairy grey but although it's another grey shade it's like one of those sort of iridescent sparkly shades if you guys can see that it's one of those ones that it's quite hard to kind of catch like it's one of those ones that's got like blue and purple sort of reflex all through it that sort of catch the light and move and it's just super super beautiful it was limited edition um i think from 2015 or something definitely keeping this one generally quite like dior eyeshadows so i've got another two here in this packaging so this first one is called reflection it's a bit hard panned actually but I'm sure I could probably lift that off and even though it's hard panned it is still performing beautifully. Oh right we're definitely keeping you. So that is reflection and then this one is fever. Yep definitely keeping those two. I do think like as a general rule Dior makeup is one of my favourite brands and it's I feel like it's quite underrated. I don't feel like I see a lot of people on YouTube talking about it, um, but their eyeshadows in particular are just some of the best in my opinion. Speaking of hard pan, this shade from MAC is called Blonde Streak and uh, this pans so hard so often and it's really pretty when it's not hard pan but it just, it's a sort of constant battle to make it not hard panned. Can you guys see that? It is really pretty but I think this is just, it's so much work. I feel like every time I go to use this I'm in a rush, remember that it's hard panned and I'm like I can't be bothered getting the sellotape out and lifting it to reuse what's underneath so I'm going to pass this one on. I have two of the Maybelline colour tattoos, one is in the shade 
timeless black and the other one is metallic pomegranate oh this actually still feels really creamy so that is a timeless black i feel like it's okay but i have got the by terry ombre black star the black matte one that i feel like like that's not that opaque but i might have used it as a base for like a powder black look and um, but i feel like if i was going to do that i would use the by terry one so i'm gonna pass this one along and let's see how the pomegranate one is fading again i feel like that's actually it's fine it's kind of swatching better than i expected it to given the age etc but it's just fine it's not anything that special in my collection so I'm going to get rid of it. Two things I'm definitely keeping are these from Burberry. So these live in with my single shadows, but they're not actually, they're actually sequins basically. So I've got a pot of gold sequins and a pot of black ones. As you can imagine, these do not get a huge amount of use, but they're a really fun product to have. So I'm definitely going to keep a hold of these two. And then in a kind of similar vein, I've got some loose glitters here so I actually just got these I was going to say I actually just got these at Christmas I didn't I got them at Christmas last year when Lauren and I were in London um so they're all from Cryolan I don't think yeah there's not really much point in swatching these because I feel like you really need to build them up with a uh, glitter glue but I'm going to keep the three of them Two that I'm definitely not going to keep are from Illamasqua and these are the Molten Metals um, and I've just had these for so long. They are very very pigmented, they are so so beautiful but I have hooded eyes so I don't have a lot of eye space that you actually see the eyeshadow. Um, it's more that you'll see maybe a slight bit of it around the edge of my eyes and then you'll see it when I close my eyes or whatever or if I take something right up but because of the nature of the formula of these they crease really badly so you don't really get that like the way that that looks like smooth and beautiful and super impactful it doesn't look like that on my eyelid so I'm just going to say goodbye to these two even though they swatch so nicely and look so beautiful that is not how they look in practice on my eye shape so time to say goodbye got some more from Illamasqua so let's look at them got one of their powder shadows in the shade Wicked. I feel like it's quite pretty but I just couldn't tell you the last time I've used it so I think I'm just gonna pass this one on as well. I feel like at this point my desire to have less and be able to actually get use out of what I'm keeping really outweighs my need to just keep things because they're pretty which is hopefully a good thing. So I've got two more from Illamasqua. This one is their Pure Pigment in the shade Fervent. These are beautiful, they are messy to work with, so so yeah, they are definitely the sort of thing that I only use if I've got the time to sort of sit and do my makeup properly, but they are so very pretty. Although, where is it? Are you? No. I've got Urban Decay Solstice, is that you? Yeah, I just want to swatch Solstice next to this, so Solstice is... Oh no, they're they're not the same, but they're kind of similar. So that's the fervor and that's solstice. And solstice just because it's in like this is a lot easier to use. Um, and I feel like maybe that's what I would reach for if I was looking for one of these sort of shifting sort of textured looking shadows. So I think I will keep solstice and pass on fervent. Other one that I've got is another pure pigment in the shade Berber which oh I love this when I bought it. I re remember getting this. I got it at the Cryoland shop in London. Um, I think it might have been on the same trip that I got Lindsay and Lauren to buy that NYX um, shade actually. So again it was right when these shades sort of took off and started being in fashion and again I like that but I feel like I probably own that sort of shade in a palette now. Yeah I think I'm gonna pass this one on as well. I feel like this just sounds so boring to say but I feel like when I was younger I would have found the time to play with loose pigments and things and it was my idea of a good time whereas now I still really like beauty products. It's not that I've become disinterested in that but I just 
I don't have the time to play anymore, uh, which sounds really sad and it's not something I'm particularly sad about, but I just mean it's like, if I come in from work at night, I've got other stuff I'd rather do now than spend, you know, an hour playing with loose eyeshadows and building them up and seeing how they look. And then the thing is then when I am doing my makeup to go out, if I've not used that loose eyeshadow in a while and I can't remember how it drops or anything like that, I won't pick it up. So yeah, I feel like loose pigments are just for people who have a lot more time on their hands than me or who have the same amount of time in their hands as me but choose to dedicate it to beauty in a way that I choose to dedicate my time to other things. Uh, so that's it. It sounds a bit sad, and it is, but it is what it is. So yeah, I have to... I have to build a makeup collection or not so much build it as I have to downsize my current makeup collection to become a makeup collection that works for my life now because I feel like I got so much of this makeup when I was like in like my early 20s or I was at uni like most of it is super old that is the thing about most of my collection is I didn't just accumulate this stuff within a year or two it, it has you know it's come from a time when makeup was something I was so excited about and so passionate about but that's just not my life anymore and you know it's time to kind of let go of that in a way so that's where we are. Two really old products are these Estee Lauder eyeshadows so this one is the shade Hot Cinnamon Shimmer which is pretty but nothing special so we're going to pass that one on. And the second one here is Metallic Star, or Midnight Star, sorry. Oh, that looks really good, doesn't it? See, I really like this. But, I don't know, I couldn't tell you the last time I wore it. I think I'll keep this for now because I do still really like the way that that swatches. See, it's got this kind of blue shift to it because it's obviously meant to be like the midnight sky which is not so much black as it's blackish blue and that is reflected in the shadow but I feel like blue is one of those things that it's a colour I'm very attracted to in the pan but don't like so much on my face so I feel like that's something I need to remember but yeah I think I might keep this and try and give it another go oh something I'm definitely keeping Shantikai shadow I think this was from 2018 their summer collection it is so beautiful this is another one that might not show to its best potential on camera because it's another one that's got like that sort of flip to the colour like in some lights it's kind of pinky iridescency other lights it's like really gold can you guys kind of get that from the pan at least like I feel like that's not looking all that special in the swatch but it's so special on the eyes so I'm definitely keeping that. That's the other Urban Decay one since I looked at Solstice and this is the shade Midnight Cowboy right again. Oh that even feels good to swatch. Can you guys see that? It's like, like textured and rich and enjoyable. Uh, right, let's swatch it there. Super pretty. Yep, so I'm going to keep that one as well. Eyeshadows from KVD. I feel like I like all of these. Yeah, see that's lovely. So that is the shade Rop It, although I think all of these are discontinued now because, uh, you know, obviously there's been takeovers and things. Oh, they're gorgeous still though. Right, I'm definitely keeping those two. This one, as you can see, is crushed, so we need to be very careful here, but it's very pretty nonetheless. Oh, right, yeah. I'm going to keep them, I'm going to put this to one side though, because I'm going to take it downstairs and repress it. Lime Crime, I've got two Lime Crime glitters. Oh, again, there's not really much point in swatching these, because they're kind of the sort of thing that you need to have a base with and things. I feel like the one time of year that I do like spend time and play with makeup is for Christmas. So a lot of these kind of glittery things I like having for Christmas party season. It's more the sort of loose but not particularly festive shades that I don't feel I'll ever kind of return to getting use out of. 
Ugh, see that just looks so different on camera to how it looked like these things don't really translate properly I don't think like it looks so rich and purple in real life and in, on camera it just having said that I don't think I would use this purple one now I think like the white one with the shift I probably will use but not the purple so I will keep this one and get rid of the purple. I think I'll probably keep this from RMS Beauty and it's the shade Tobacco Road TR94. Yeah I'm definitely going to keep that, that's the sort of beautiful grunge, I mean I feel like if you take the glycerin out of there that those four are like some of my dream colours put together, you would just need like a mustard yellow and then like a a deep brown in there and that's probably my ideal palette uh, so I'm definitely keeping that. I've got three cream shadows from Benefit to go through so I've got Birthday Suit, My Two Cents and RSVP. I don't know if they still make these anymore so this is RSVP. Well, it's still really creamy and emollient actually so that's cute. I feel like I got all of these in, does anyone remember when Benefit used to do those like box sets and it was like almost like your whole face in a box kind of thing and they all had like cute names and whatever. This one is Birthday Suit. So that is RSVP and Birthday Suit. Finally we have got My Two Cents. So that is that one at the end there. I feel like all three of these are all right but just nothing special. I think I'm ready to part with these three. I've got two Dior shadows I think unless these really dried out I'll be keeping them both and um, they're both from old Christmas collections so the first one here is called Mirror oh so pretty and then this shade is called Blazing yeah there's not a huge amount of difference in it but I do really like them both so I'm going to keep them both I've got two NARS single shadows. Again, I think I'll probably keep both of these is Dion and Callisto. Dion first. These are all obviously kind of shades of the same family, but very much enjoy them. And then this is the shade Callisto. Yep, I absolutely love all four of them. So that's Dior Mirror, Blazing, NARS Dion and NARS Callisto. Right, I've got four Pat McGrath shadows that I'm going to kind of look at together. Um, so the first one, which I will be keeping despite what I said about blue because I love this shadow, um, is the Pat McGrath Ultraviolet Blue Pigment. Oh, it's, oh, I mean, just, just can you even? There's, there's no way I'm being parted from that. I love that shade, so keeping that one. I got that like back when Pat McGrath first launched and it was like the little kits. Um, so the other shades that I got in that kit, I got this uh, Dark Matter Pigment, which is just a matte black. I'm gonna put that in a maybe pile for now. Then next up, I've got the Mercury Pigment, this one is called. That kind of looks like it belongs down with the, the first four. Right, definitely keeping Mercury. Astral White is the, the last pigment. So this is another one of these like ones that sort of flips and it looks silver and then it looks kind of blue and yeah right I'm definitely keeping them. My thought process with this is that I've not kept the Maybelline one because I think I would use the By Terry matte black crayon in its place but then this is a this is a powder so I feel I'm going to keep this for now I think. Then the last Pat McGrath thing that I've got this is an eye gloss which if I'm honest I have never used. I've got hooded eyes. I feel like I love the idea of this. I feel like that's why I've not, you know, parted with it before now. It's because I sort of love the idea of one of these like super smeary eye looks, but uh, I've just never done it and I don't know if I'm ever going to do it really, so I think I'll pass that one along. Get four Bella Pierre um, mineral eyeshadows and I do really like these. The first one is called Stage. I mean just look at that. Oh so pretty. I feel like this with that RMS Beauty shadow would just be gorgeous so I'm going to keep that one. And I've got this shade Coco which is really really pretty. Lovely. Yeah I'm going to keep that one. 
this shade Tropic, this might be up for elimination. Again, I think that's kind of wandering into that blue territory. This is the sort of colour that I love, you know, objectively as a colour. I look at it and I'm like, oh, you're so gorgeous. But I don't know if I love it on me. Like, I do think that's a super pretty shade. But I just don't think it's for me anymore. So, yeah, I'm going to pass this one along. And then last up, I have got Discotheque which is nice, but again, I don't know if I would actually reach for that anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna keep these two and get rid of these two. And that brings us down onto the Chanel shadows. First of all, I've got a completely unopened Mirage, which I'm going to keep, and that is the backup of this. So this was in my first ever project pan. When these got discontinued, I love this shade so much. When these get discontinued, I bought the backup and, um. I did hit pan on it so it has been repressed but you know as you can see there's still plenty of that shadow left but I, I would maybe quite like to actually hit pan in this again but at the same time in fact let's, let's take this out of the box oh, so this has never been opened this is a new one oh yeah I mean it's just like a completely different feel altogether so yeah, that's the new shadow and that's the old one. I feel like now I really understand that I am never finishing an eyeshadow without serious effort. So I think I'll maybe just keep the new one, start using it and say goodbye to the old one. It's quite scary when you see them because I was kind of like, oh, I could still make this work. It's definitely a bit dried out and whatever. But when you see them side by side, it's just, you see the difference. So I'm going to keep the new one in the packaging and the strange little brushes that you get with these things and I'm going to say goodbye to to the old one and another one that I think I'm going to say goodbye to is this one this was actually the first ever one of these illusion d'ombres that I got this started all the rest of them that I have owned over the years and it's the shade Rouge Gorge and again this is just quite dried up now it's not quite as pigmented as it was at one point and I know you can, I mean, yeah, I know you can kind of revive these things a little bit, but I have got the ColourPop Orange You Glad palette, and I feel like now if I wanted a shade of orange, I can get it from that palette, so I'm just going to get rid of this one. I'm going to keep this one, I think, Rouge Brulee, one of my favourites, and I swatched this quite recently for an Instagram, uh, and it's still, it's still going. It's still very pretty. Although, wait till I go get that Colourpop palette for a second. I thought that there might have been a dupe for that shade in this, but I don't think there actually is. But I'm just going to do this shade Squeeze Me. Yeah, no, they're not the same. And there's Tangerine Dream. No, to be fair, this is less of an orange. It's more of a sort of coppery shade. So I'm going to stick with my guns and keep Rouge Brulee. Rouge Contrast. These are like a sort of, almost like a sort of putty texture. Can you guys see that? It's pleasing. So this is Rouge Contrast, which again, I think has probably had its best days. So I think I'm gonna pass that one on. The second last one is a Mirifique. I hope this one is good because I really like this shade. Yeah, see that's kind of like the like the sort of powdery putty version of that Stila shade that I liked so I'm going to keep that one and then the very last one that we've got is Phantasme which again is one of my favourite shades so if this still swatches well I'm going to keep oh yeah that's very pretty isn't it again it's quite a subtle one but it's just super pretty so I'm going to keep that. Okay, so in conclusion, count what we are keeping is one, two, three, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So we are keeping 36. And leaving my collection today, we have one, two, three, four, 24, 25, 26. So 26 gone. I'm quite happy with that. That definitely take, that takes it down by over a third. So I'm feeling quite accomplished. 
feeling pleased. Good declutter, I think. If you enjoy decluttering and you haven't seen it, I will link my lipstick declutter up at the end. Thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!